Welcome to the video uh, for Caboodle 1C, Chapter Test 3 on Expressions and Formulae. Question 1. Here are two shapes. Find the perimeter of each shape. So the perimeter is the distance around a shape. So all I need to do is add all these together. So it's a case of collecting like terms. I've got y and another y and x plus 2 and 2x plus 4. So I've got two y's. How many x's have I got? I've got three x's collecting those terms and got 2 plus 4 gives me 6. Same thing here. I've got just around this shape, so I've got p plus p plus 4 so p, p plus 4, I don't know why I'm going anti-clockwise here, p plus p plus 4 plus p plus q plus 2 and plus 2q minus 1. Okay, so that's all I've got. So now I'm going to collect like terms. I've got 1p, 2p's, and 3p's. So 1, 2, 3p's. That gives me 3p and q's. I've got 2q and another q. So I've got plus 3q. And then I've got plus 4 plus 2 gives me 6 minus 1. So it gives me 6 take away 1, 5. Okay, question 2. This was this people found very tricky and I think it's because it's a very much a problem solving type of question and I'll try to go through it nice and slowly and talk it through in detail. So a fence is made up of panels 1.5, 1 1.5 metres wide which are between posts which are each 20 centimetres wide. Write an expression for the length in metres of a fence which has n posts. Okay, so if it has n posts it's going to have how 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 much how much distance is that going to be? Well, it's going to be twenty centimeters. So if I do this in centimeters, it's going to be twenty centimeters multiplied by how many posts we've got. That will be my width of all the post parts. And I know that I can write twenty times n in algebra as twenty n. So that would be the case if my, we're just one post after another after another. So if they were all just arranged like this, post, 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 and so on, and there was nothing in between them, then that would be correct, 20n, if for the number of centimetres. I'm going to want to find metres, so we're going to have to convert this at the end. Now, one and a half metres wide, that's the number of fence posts I've got. Okay, well, so that's the number of, of panels I've got. They're, they're each one and a half metres wide. Let's have a look. If I've got three posts, then I'll have two panels. If I have two posts, I'll have one panel. If I had four posts, so if I had another post here, I'd have three panels. Five, I'd have four. In fact, I've always got one fewer panel than I have post. Imagine it. Yeah, one, two posts, one panel, three posts, two panels, four posts, three panels, and so on and so forth. So what I've got is 150, that's the number of centimetres, multiplied by how many, how many can I say my panels are in terms of the number of posts? Well, it's one less than my number of posts. So that is n minus 1. 150 times n minus 1. So I can just write that as 150 n minus 1 which is also the same as multiplying out the brackets 150 n minus 150 so my total length in meters well firstly my total length in centimeters would be 150 n and 20 n take away 150 Okay, so that's 100, 170 lots of n 
take away 150. Okay. And that is going to be, that's the number of centimeters. So for meters, what, how am I going to change between centimeters and meters? It would be 1.7 n take away, to change from meters, centimeters to meters, I'm going to divide by 100 in both cases, so take away 1.5. That's my solution. 1.7 n take away 1.5. There are a couple of other valid potential answers there, but that one certainly works. Okay, let's look at question B. So, give yourself a bit of time there to make sure you've taken that in and to complete a good quality correction. And have a look at the next one. Part B. I want to put a fence like this down one side of my garden, which is 19 meters long. How many posts and panels will I need? Well, I don't want you to, at this stage, use this formula, although you could, because most of you didn't. I want to show you that there are other ways of trying to tackle this question. If it's 19 meters long, how many posts and panels will I need? Right. I need to have at least enough posts and panels to cover this. So, I'm going to make a guess. If, if this is one and a half meters, and that's 20 centimeters, so I've got 1.7 for all of that, then I'm going to think about this. Right. 19 meters long. Well, what about if it was, I'm going to take a guess at 10. If I had 10 posts, then I would have, and I'd have 9 panels, wouldn't I? If I had 10 posts, I'd have 9 panels. What would that come to? How long would that be? Well, 10 posts is 10 times 0 0.2, which would give me 2 meters, so that would be 2 meters. And my 9 panels, that's 9 times by 1.5. Okay, so 9 times 1.5. If you're not sure about that straight away, just do, do it like this. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 1 is 9, 135. But remember, it's not 135. I've got to, I've got, because I multiplied that by 10 to begin with, I've got to divide now by 10. So that's 13.5. So that would come to all together. If I had 10 posts and 9 panels, that comes to 15 meters 50. Okay? So 15 meters 50. That's not 19 meters. Hmm, I need it to be, I need it to be longer. I need it to be quite a bit longer. So mm, let me think. I'll try 13 posts, and which would mean 12 panels. Okay. So 12. So 13 times 0 0.2 is 2.6 meters worth of posts. 12 panels. Okay. So 12 panels would be 12 times by 1.5 which gives me 16, does it, hang on, no it doesn't, gives me 18 meters. Okay, so this comes to 20.6 meters. That's enough. Could I get away with one post and one panel less? Well, one post and one panel less one post and one panel together would give me 1.7 meters. So I wouldn't quite have enough, because if I took 1.7 meters away from here, I'd end up with 18.9 meters. So I need to buy 13 posts and 12 panels, because that's going to give me more than enough to, to complete my fence. So my answer is 13 posts and 12 panels. Very challenging question, I know. What will I need to do to make my fence measure 19 meters exactly? Well, I'm just going to... I'll need to just... I, I, won't, I won't need to use... I'll need to cut, cut down some of my panel on and or posts. So I'm going to have to cut down my panel or posts 
and or posts a bit. I think that's enough. Doesn't say to, doesn't say give it exactly how much you should take off, and there's loads of different ways you could do it. So that was really, really a very challenging question, and any of you that scored marks on that have done very well indeed. Um, question three, simplify each of these expressions. So I've got 2n multiplied by n squared. Now let's remember, when we're working with brackets, we're going to multiply what's outside the bracket by each term inside the bracket. So 2n times 2 times by n squared gives me 2n cubed, and 2n times by 3n gives me 6 n squared. Remember, n times n is n squared. n times by n squared, that's just n times n times n, which is the same as n cubed. So that's my expression simplified. 2n cubed plus 6n squared. If you wanted to factorize it, you could do there, but I'm happy with that at this, for this question. So a factorized version of that would be 2n squared and then I'd have n plus 3. Okay, but that's that 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 factorizing is tested lower on. So as long as you've got 2n cubed plus 6n squared, that's what I'm looking for, multiplying out these expressions. 2n cubed plus 6n squared. Let's have a look at this one. 2p squared times 3q times 5p times 3pq. Okay, so I'm looking for like terms. That's what the challenge is here. Actually, this is all multiplied together, and I don't, I'm not, I don't know, I don't think that that was the intention of this question. Um, if they're all multiplied together, then it is tricky. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply all the coefficients, and then I'm going to have to multiply everything else here together as well. So I'm going to multiply two by three gives me six. Six times five gives me thirty. Thirty times three gives me ninety. Let's have a look at the p. So I've got p squared, and another p, and another p. So I've got p to the power of 4. P, p times p times p times p. And how many q have I got? I've got q multiplied by another q, so I've got q squared, and that's my answer. So that is, again, a very challenging question indeed. So well done if you've managed that. 3a times 2a gives me 6a squared. 4b times 3a gives me 12ab, right? So 3 times 4 and also the a times the b. Plus 2a squared, take away 2a times 7b minus, so I'm doing minus 14ab. Now to simplify this, I now I need to look for like terms. I've got a squared, which are like terms, and I've got ab's, which are like terms. So I've got eight lots of a squared. I've got 12ab take away 14ab, so that's a total of minus two lots of ab. Right, factorizing. Factorize each of these. So I need to look for a common factor here. I've got 3 as a common factor of 3d and 12, so I can put that outside the brackets, inside the bracket. What do I need to, to put into multiply to get to 3d? I'm putting d plus 4. Let's have a look at this next one. 24f take away 16fg. Well, 8's the highest common factor of both 24 and 16. And I've got f here as well. f is also a factor of both 24f and minus 16fg. So I've got 8f outside the bracket. What do I need to multiply it by to get what's inside the bracket? 8f, well, if I have three lots of 8f, I've got 24f. And if I do 8f times by minus 2, so 8 times by minus 2 would give me minus 16, and then f, but I still also need to multiply by g. That's my answer for that. 8f, 3 minus 2g. And lastly, we've got a few questions on substitution. So, if x equals 3, y minus 2z, Find the value of x when y equals 5 and z equals 2. Substitution, I'm just going to put in these values into here. So I've got x equals 3 times by 5 minus 2 times by 2, which is the same as 
3 times by 5 minus what 2 times 2 is 4, which is the same as 3 times by 5 minus 4, which is 3 times by 1, which equals 3. Okay, next question. P squared minus Q over 2. S equals P squared minus Q over 2. S is, and I'm going to just substitute in, P equals 2, Q equals 4. So, I've got 2 squared, S equals 2 squared minus 4 divided by 2, just substituting in the 4. Which is the same as 4 minus 4 divided by 2, which is the same as 4 minus, what's 4 divided by 2? It's just 2. 4 minus 2, which equals 2. The answer is 2. Last question. When two electrical resistors of strength P and Q are connected in a circuit, their total effect R is given by the formula. R equals P times Q divided by P plus Q. So I'm going to substitute in P times by Q. Okay, so let's think about that. So I'm going to substitute that in. P times by Q. So that's P is 8, Q is 2. And it's going to be divided by P plus Q. So that's 8 plus 2. So I've got 16 divided by 10, which equals 1.6. Or 8 over 5, if you'd prefer. Whatever you would like. So 1.6. That was a very, very challenging test. Um, so well done for getting, though, for getting some of those right. Um, and use this video, please. Go back over it to make sure you're doing good quality corrections and to have a go at um, some of the follow-up work. Thank you.